with Tavi, we've evolved quite a lot. Um, f you know, coming from the early implants in high risk and intermediate risk patients, I think we're now at a position where we learned so much and we've um, advanced the technology so much that we are in the position of treating low risk patients with uh, very good results, sometimes even better, uh, people would say, than in surgery. Um, and we're now in a moment where we optimize and, and minimize our TAVI approaches. So um, in, in this field, um, there are a couple of unmet needs that I think we should address um, while we further evolve this technology, which is, has been great for all, all our patients. And the patients um, that we now treat will get maybe younger and less um, have less risk, uh, lower risk. So we need to find um, exactly, we need to find out what these patients need for a better lifetime management. Two of the imminent questions that we need to answer for low risk and younger patients are um, PVL rates and coronary alignment questions. And this valve uh, is actually addressing uh, both of them. So what we found out is that um, this valve performed very well in patients with aortic stenosis. We've seen um, uh, implantations in patients uh, overall 28 out of 73, which have been treated for uh, AS and AR together. So 28 of them are uh, treated for aortic stenosis. While in this uh, huge cohort we, s we separated AR and AS patients, um, the AS patients were very classical AS patients. They had an Agatson score of over 3000. Uh, they had a mean uh, aortic valve gradient of over 40 millimeters mercury. So classical aortic stenosis patients. And we treated them uh, with a self-expanding target system and we found out that the results were actually quite stunning. We have seen that um, out of 28 patients, we could implant 28 patients uh, transfemorally. We had um, no uh, severe or major life-threatening vascular complication. We also had no bleeding complication uh, that was major. Um, we've seen that the pacemaker rate is actually quite low with 0% in this cohort. Um, and we've seen that the paravalvular para leakage is um, at a very low rate with no moderate PVL and 14% of patients having mild PVL, while 86% of these patients had non or trace PVL. So quite good results. I think it's very important that while we evolve TAVI in AS patients, that we address exactly these needs that we need to find, um, that, we've, that we are finding relevant for lifetime management. Um, and this valve actually addresses both of them very nicely by design and with the first data. I mean, it's only 28 patients, but still it's first data that is out there for commercial implants. Um, and so it might actually be a very good candidate to um, further look on to see how coronary alignment is important in our patients and how uh, mild PVL uh, and a high percentage of non trace PVL will help these patients have better results over time. I think there's one general question, which is um, what is a good candidate for surgery and what is a good uh, candidate for TAVR? So in, 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 uh, which patients should be treated interventionally? Um, and I think we're, we're gonna push the boundaries there a little bit together with our surgeon colleagues um, that we you know, might wanna find out that the patient who's 70 or 75 might be a good surgical candidate. Uh, but if his anatomy is not favorable for surgery, he might actually be a good TAVR candidate. Exactly let the patient who's 78 might be a good TAVR candidate, um, but also he might be a good operator candidate because he has bicuspid valve anatomy. So finding out um, what patients will really benefit from which general approach, surgical and interventional, is, is the first question. The second question is also um, which device now speaking about TAVIs, will fit the best for this patient. And with this study we did, um, with this little registry, I think we're adding more data into how we can customize the, the TAVI valve we use for the patient that actually needs treatment and to, you know, and the question is which patient will get which valve. There's a ton of data now out there with all TAVI systems improving in, 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 in endpoints. Um, but in the, I think in the end it's, it's gonna be a very, tough competition uh, and so all the valves need to perform on a very high level.